What's up guys, Daniel de Groot here. Last week I posted on my Instagram that I would do one free match analysis. Uh, I got a lot of cool videos, a lot of people uh, sending some really nice fights, but uh, one of the fights that stood out was Belmir's fight. He's a white belt from Sarajevo and he had a, a really cool fight at the Europeans, lots of action, uh, lots of little mistakes that I uh, think a lot of people can learn from. So that's why I picked this match for the, the complete analysis. I try to help everybody out with some small tips, but uh, this one we're gonna do the full match analysis. It's especially in this uh, single leg ace guard, uh, it's one of his favorite positions, as you can see in the match, but there's some small mistakes he makes, small details that he was missing. Um, so I'm going to address those. I'm going to show you guys how I like to do it, and I think everybody can learn something from it. So let's just dive straight into it. Where he immediately pulls guard, he gets a color grip, and he pulls straight to uh, single leg X. This can be quite tricky at higher levels, because uh, people can just hop over straight into the mount, but Bilmer controls the distance with the color, and uh, he pulls it off here. Okay, so here he makes a small mistake uh, that I don't like to do. He holds the ankle with his left hand instead of just getting his arm all the way through. Uh, this way, like, no, he even lets go. Um, and his opponent could have just posted his knee on the mat. Luckily, he doesn't do that. Bummer. Still holds the ankle. And now he gets a good grip. This is what you be sh uh, should be looking for straight from the beginning. Uh, I think an important note to make for, for white belts is that a lot of your mistakes will go unpunished. So uh, if I would have made the same position during a competition, if I would have just grabbed the ankle instead of holding uh, all the way through, my opponent would have immediately smashed me and put me into half guard. But uh, white belts can usually get away with these mistakes because their opponents aren't so uh, sharp yet. Uh, so that's why it's good to have like somebody look at your matches, somebody of a higher level, so they can point out your mistakes, even if you didn't get punished for it. Yeah, we tries to go foot for foot lock. So whenever you're attacking foot locks, I know it's possible, especially like really strong guys, they can use this standard single leg ace configuration. But for me, uh, not that I'm weak, but also I'm not the strongest guy. Uh, I'm a federate. Uh, I think it's important to have like a stronger control of the hip. So I like to post either my right foot or my left foot on my opponent's hip. And that way I can make more distance and put more power uh, in the foot lock. Here you can see the opponent defense opens up uh, his base and uh, nothing really happened, didn't even get an advantage. Now Bummer does have a good control, tries to get a color. I always like to get the, the same side color here, uh, the, the cross color, so, uh, but Bummer gets the, the other color. Here he lets his arm slip again. One thing uh, Bummer could have done here, a uh, better job is keeping his opponent off balance. Single leg X is a, a guard that's very good to attack from, but it's not the best guard for retention. Uh, like lasso guard or warm guard, those are better to hold your opponents in place. So whenever you're playing a guard like this, which is a bit more dynamic, you want to keep your opponent off balance. That way you can't uh, start passing your guard. So you want to attack so he can't attack. Again, Bummer lets the foot slip, opponent can smash the guard. This time he does punish him a little bit for it, he still doesn't pass, but uh, Bummer is out of the single leg X now. If he would just hold this foot, either with an overhook or an underhook, the opponent would have been able, wouldn't have been able to do this. He used the knee shot well, manages the distance, good frames. Recovers. Spin was a bit exaggerated, I think. He could have uh, just framed uh, to hold his guard, but uh, he didn't lose lose the position, so no problem there. Now he gets back, and again, it's kind of a weak grip. You want to go all the way through immediately. You don't want to hang out with an ankle grip. You want to go all the way deep around it, get a deep overhook. The opponent, I think what happened here is the opponent forces his leg across. Um, you can't, if you don't know this rule, most people already know it, but if you don't know this rule, when you're playing single leg X like Bomer is doing here, you can't use uh, cross this foot across the midline of your opponent. So here his foot passes across the opponent's midline and he could get a penalty. But I think in this situation his opponent forced his foot there, which means a penalty for the opponent. Yes, the opponent gets a penalty. Reset without the reap, and there we go. So again, Bomber is letting this foot go. Big mistake. You always want to be overhooking or underhooking. I think that's the most important lesson for this video. 
when you're playing single leg kicks. You don't want to hold the ankle, you want to get a good overhook or underhook. But Berman is lucky, the opponent doesn't punish it. He keeps on pressure, but he can ma maintain his guard using this uh, leg in the middle. I think opponents get a, they get a advantage for half guard. Not sure, because it wasn't really half guard. I think they changed that rule. Okay, so now Bomber is playing a bit of open guard. Opponent dies for a foot lock here. Bomber should have come up to the other side. So look how he's looking to the uh, to his right. If he would have come up to his left, it would have been easier to to maintain a position and defend a foot lock. Opponent throws him back on the ground. Uh, nothing happened. Nice sweep attempt. And now I think Bomber's working to set up a triangle. So if you've seen the last, uh, my last video about finishing triangles, um, you should know uh, what Bomer's goal is here. He should try to get this foot in his kneecap with his toes pointing up. So he adjusts, but look at the mistake he makes. He goes to the toes of the foot, so his foot is bent. That means that the triangle is easier to escape and it's less tight. He holds the head, he does a small adjustment, but I think he should have kept that, that grip here on the shin here. He grabs his shin, now he should have just opened his left leg, made an angle and closed the triangle in a better way. He went too, too, too fast to, to try to finish. Uh, I don't know who said this, it's like a famous quote. Um, if I had three hours, if I like six hours for, to, to cut off a tree, I would spend the majority of the time to, to sharpen my axe. So he should have done better pre preparatory work. He should have just locked the triangle perfectly and from there start finishing. Now he went finishing with a uh, with an X that wasn't sharp, so to speak. And in competition, it's hard to, to, to finish a triangle, especially at the European Championships. Nobody wants to lose there. It's hard to finish a triangle that isn't perfectly locked. So you can see his foot is still bent. Opponent tries to roll out. Not a solid escape. Honestly, I think his opponent should have been disqualified here. Uh, but Bomber just gets a, an advantage for this. I think it should have at least be two points and a, a penalty for the opponent. Because this is not a, a legit triangle escape. Uh, but the ref disagrees with me. Okay. Start again. Double guard pull. Opponent comes up, gets an advantage. Uh, Bummer could have come up to, to take the lead, but I think he's a bit more comfortable playing guard. So it's okay choice to just uh, stay down. Again, he makes that mistake of not over or under hooking the, the leg. And here he tries, he got the grip, uh, the grips for what my coach calls a levanta la bomba, standing up uh, with stupid power. So he gets the color, he has the, the color here and he has the pants. And here you can just throw your opponent forward and stand up and drag him down with like a color drag single leg. But the opponent's uh, base is very wide, so it's a bit harder. But Belmer feels it really good, so he throws his opponent backwards. Uh, like this wouldn't probably happen uh, at a higher level because opponents wouldn't leave such a big gap of base behind them. But at white belt it, uh, it works when opponent just... Let's himself get swept backwards. Okay, so I think what Bomber Bomber is leading by two zero now, um, one advantage behind, and I think he has a, a very good strategic uh, mind here for especially for a white belt. He knows he doesn't want to take too many risks. If he just stays on top for the for the remaining minute or so, he will win the match. So he's like he's basing back. He's not taking too much ma too many risks. And you can see both are pretty tired, so I think it's a really good choice to not commit too much to the to the guard pass. And it does a last ditch effort to sweep, but Brahma wins the match. Really cool match to watch. Uh, some small details that should be fixed. Uh, like I said, 
when you're a white belt, it's uh, easy to make mistakes that don't get punished. When you you get to a higher level, like purple, brown belt, then like every mistake you make is gonna get punished by your opponent. So uh, it's it's always good, especially in the lower levels, to have somebody watch your matches. Also at the higher levels, to to have somebody watch your matches and fix your mistakes. Like not all mistakes are punished in competition. A lot of the mistakes, uh, like your opponent doesn't notice. So it's always good to have a, a higher level person watch your matches. And Bama wins the match. 2-0 and a draw advantages. Great job. Really fun match to watch. Okay, now let's take a look at how uh, I deal with the same situations. So here you'll see me uh, go to single leg gigs. I'll do use the ankle grip to, to get this foot into the position, but then I immediately switch to a strong overhook. And here uh, my opponent taps really quickly on the foot lock. In the other match, here we'll look at how I lock the triangle. So you can see I hold my shin. I adjust, I open my guard a little bit until I get the perfect triangle. All right, that's it for this week's analysis. Hope you guys learned something from that. Um, I'm going to do a partnership with Corner Me. Uh, they're a, a company, a jiu-jitsu company that's offering online coaching and uh, I'm going to be one of the coaches there. So uh, with Corner Me, I'll, you'll have a, a Skype interview with me first. We'll get to know each other a little bit. Uh, you can tell me about the positions you have trouble with, uh, the, the situations you encounter. And from there, I'll do an analysis either of a, a competition video or a training video. And I'll uh, help you develop beyond the things uh, that I see. So make sure to check it out. I'll keep you guys posted. Check my Instagram as well. Link is in the description below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel. Leave a like, leave a comment and see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Hello.